reproductive biology of cassava. Cassava is a perennial shrub. Flowering is closely linked to branching. Since inflorescences are terminal, the plant can continue its growth after flowering by producing branches. Cassava flowers are actually special structures called siathia. Flowering affects drastically plant architecture. Some genotypes start flowering early and profusely, whereas other flower late and little. Erect plant architecture, this is late flowering, is usually preferred by farmers. La ramificación sería esta y las flores que se generan de, de esa ramificación. Flores femeninas y flores masculinas, que el desarrollo es un poco más tardío. Within the great diversity of cassava genotypes, there are different types of plant architecture. Some are erect and do not branch. These plants do not flower or flower late, thus limiting their usefulness due to the scarcity of seeds that can be obtained from them. On the other hand, some plants branch early and profusely, facilitating breeders' work. However, genotypes with this plant architecture will produce similar type of progenies, which is generally disliked by farmers. En esta planta encontramos una ramificación, dos y tres ramificaciones y en cada ramificación hay un evento de floración. Initially, the inflorescence is difficult to detect and more often than not, the first evidence of flowering is the development of branches. A globular shape of the apical meristem indicates that flowering has already been initiated. A tear-shaped meristem is typical of a plant that is still undergoing vegetative growth. These pictures show the evolution of flowering a long time. In the first sample, flowering has not begun. Two days later, the meristem shows a typical globular shape, which keeps accentuating along the following days. Eventually, New branching is easily recognizable with its respective inflorescence in the center. The period of time between the induction of flowering, this is, the apical meristems change into the globular form, until flowering becomes evident with the appearance of branches, can be of around three weeks. The inflorescence is a raceme in which the basal portion will carry female flowers, and the apical section will carry the male flowers. Because of the positioning of the flowers in the raceme, the anthesis of female flowers occur about two weeks before that of male ones. Timing of anthesis, therefore, reduces considerably the possibility of self-pollination, which nonetheless can occur between male and female flowers of the same genotype, but from different plants. A fully receptive female flower can be identified by the presence of nectar drops at its base. Male flowers are slightly smaller and more abundant than the female counterpart. Bees are usually responsible for the pollination. Pollen grains are large and sticky. The number of pollen grains produced per flower is considerably lower than for other species. Androgenesis work for anther and microspore culture usually relies on the use of immature pollen grains. Research conducted by the Doubled Haploids project determined that male flowers about 2 to 3 mm in diameter are those that offer the larger proportion of microspores at the ideal development stage. There is, however, some varietal differences for the proper size of male flowers. For plant crosses, inflorescences with female flowers at the proper development stage are covered in the morning to prevent contamination with undesirable pollen. The bags used are kept until the afternoon when pollinations are made. Las flores femeninas en yuca abren en las horas de la tarde. Por eso es que nosotros debemos venir y revisar en las horas de la mañana esas flores que están aptas para ser polinizadas ese día y cubrirlas para evitar la contaminación generalmente por abejas. 
When controlled pollinations are required, personnel will harvest the flowers during the morning hours, before the flowers have opened, to prevent contamination by unknown pollen sources. Male flowers are collected in small plastic bottles, which properly identify the origin of the flowers, in other words, the name of the clone from which they were collected. Flowers are kept at room temperature in an office or laboratory until they are used during the afternoon. In the afternoon hours, the female flowers in the inflorescences that had been covered in the morning have reached anthesis and are ready for pollination. A person will take a male flower and gently rub the anthers in it on the surface of the stigma. If there are several receptive female flowers in the inflorescence, all of them are pollinated with the same pollen source. The inflorescence is covered again with the bag to prevent contamination with undesirable sources of pollen. Bags should be kept for three days. During the fourth day, the stigma naturally drops. A tag is attached to the bag stating the origin of the pollen, the mother genotype, the number of flowers pollinated and the date.